I'm John Buchanan. In this video, we're going to see whether or not we can generate the kind of gritty, arpeggiated sequence that we quite often hear in sort of drama and TV production. So basically a sort of pulsing, tension-y kind of a sequence. Now, of course, whenever we're writing pieces of music, we can absolutely play sequences in. We can find a little pattern that we might want to play. for instance, and of course we could just play that part in, or we could draw it, or we could sort of sequence it in some way. But I'm interested in seeing whether or not we can generate a sequence like this, first of all using the arpeggiator, and then seeing whether or not we can sort of add some grit and some beef to the sound of it using one of Logic's plugins. So firstly what I'm going to do is um, show you firstly the sound that I'm using. So this is a retro synth sound, and what I've done is to jump down in here into the synth bases, and I've selected this sound called Punchy Electro. And the only thing that I would recommend you have a think about is the amount of um, envelope you apply to the filter. The more this is open, the fizzier it gets, and obviously the less we have, the more muted that sound becomes. So I've just, I'm have just i just going to sort of slightly back that down so we get a little bit of power and punch into it, but not too much. It's not too fizzy. Okay, so what I'm going to do is to close this interface down, and what I'm going to do is come to the MIDI effects, and I'm going to select the arpeggiator. Now, usually, when we think about arpeggiating, we think about the sorts of sequences that we hear sort of all of the time in sort of synth pop and electro pop music where we hold down a chord and that chord is broken down into its individual steps. And of course, generally speaking, those um, sort of sorts of patterns come from what we refer to as live mode. So I can see that in pattern mode at the moment, I've got two options and live is the one that we would usually choose. And yeah, what I can do with that is to have these sorts of patterns that we associate with arpeggiators all of the time. But what I'm going to do instead is to come down to grid mode. And what this allows me to do is to actually draw a pattern which will play over and over again as I begin to sequence a pattern for it. And each of these individual lines is velocity sensitive. So as I push this line up or down, effectively what I'm doing is I'm feeding more velocity, more strength from each note into the pattern. So what I can do is to effectively just literally just click wherever I want, to create the pattern that I want. And what I'm going to do is to create a pattern that basically repeats twice with a little bit of a sort of 16th note step at the beginning. And then what it's going to do is to sort of back down a little bit and to produce effectively two eighth notes. So in other words, steps um, five and seven and 13 and 15 will feel like eighth notes. Now, the only thing I need to be careful of is that if I don't put in a step at step 16, the overall pattern length won't include step 16, which means that I'm going to end up with 15 sixteenths notes. 15 sixteenth notes. That's a real tongue twister. Try it. Try it now. No, I can't say it either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the pattern length to include this final step so that we get 16 16th notes. Yeah, that's much easier to say. Okay, so I've got my 16 steps, and now what I've got is a pattern that hopefully will play all the way through. Now, if I was going to play a chord, it would feel more like the kind of regular arpeggiator sort of shape, just to show you that. In that, I can hold down a chord and each step will just simply jump to the next note. But I'm just going to play one note at a time. And now what we've got is this kind of sequenced approach, but without me having to actually play every single note like I was right at the beginning. So what I'm going to do is to come back to the sound a little bit and just ever so slightly modify that. I'm just going to take the envelope down a tiny bit more. And what we can now hear is that obviously the strongest velocity steps are the ones that are going to feel the sort of brightest. And it's a subtle thing, but we've just got a little bit of variation there too. Now, the only thing is that, of course, whilst we've got a pattern now, which is working nicely, it's not very gritty. And often what we want from sounds like this is they've got some punch and some power. Now, I like this idea of this kind of sequenced approach to the pattern that I'm working on. And I'm just wondering whether or not I could bring a kind of sequenced sort of audio effect treatment so that effectively every single step of my sequence has got a little bit of action happening with it as well. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to close down the arpeggiator and what I'm going to do is to come to the step sequencer. Now, 
This is obviously in the uh, multi-effects um, options and it's step effects that I'm interested in. And effectively what step effects allows me to do is to create a running series of sequences which I can then apply to different parameters of the um, plugin that this is. So in other words, I could apply any of these steps to the filter, to the distortion unit, to the reverb, all kinds of things can be effectively modulated using a step sequence. Now to keep things easy, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off a whole bunch of things that to start with, I'm not going to use. I'm not gonna use the XY pad, I'm not gonna use the filter, and I'm not going to use the reverb. And the delay was off already and so was mod effect. So effectively now, we've turned off lots of things. What I'm interested in is seeing whether or not I can produce some distortion step sequencing. So I'm going to uh, turn the distortion unit on and in particular it's the dirt amount that I'm interested in modulating in some way. I want to create a running series of steps which is going to modulate the dirt amount giving me a sort of dynamic distortion treatment. So firstly what I need to do is to select from this drop down menu the parameter that I want to add. Now because I've turned the distortion on the distortion two parameters are now available to me. Just to show you that, if this mod a module was switched off and I came to this list, I'll find that they're greyed out. So at the moment, the only things I'm in a position to modulate are anything that's currently active. So I need to make sure that distortion is on. And when I come down to the drop down menu here, what I can then do is to come and find distortion dirt. And that is now the parameter that I want to modulate. And you can see that it's going absolutely crazy. And the reason for that is because this current sequence, which is the default one, is now modulating this parameter. Now it's too fast for me to really see what's going on here and also I haven't chosen these steps. So we're going to ignore this movement for a while and what we're going to do instead is we're going to put in the pattern that we want to use. Now I can change this pattern, I can do whatever I like with, but there's one thing that is worth noting which is that at the moment a couple of its steps are tied together, which means that the action of step four carries across to step five. I don't want that. So I'm just gonna click on this line in between and what that's gonna do is to basically make all of these steps their own thing. Okay, so my pattern went dig a dink 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 dig a dink 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 and I want to continue that in this sequence as well. So effectively what I'm thinking about here is a little bit of a sequence. This one is effectively off. I could turn it off if I wanted to, but of course I can keep it here. I'm just gonna make it a relatively low value. So effectively my step shape if we sort of keep these um, low, is this kind of a shape. So again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slightly echo that in this sort of second half of this pattern, making the steps that are off in the arpeggiated synth sequence just much lower here. And again, I've got 16 steps, so I've roughly more or less got the same sort of shape, a little bit of variation in the second half of the bar. Okay, so that's the sort of shape that I want to use, but if, this pattern is going to sort of work and it's gonna sort of pick up the sort of shape of the pattern uh, of the notes that are being triggered. There are a couple of other things I need to do. So firstly, I need to control the depth. Now this literally is going to decide how much this sequence is gonna feed into the dirt amount. And you can see that by dropping down the depth, effectively the range of that dirt dial changes. Now if I want to, what I can do is introduce a static amount. So in other words, a kind of base amount of this distortion before I then increase the depth. So I can decide whether or not I want some, which I'm then going to modulate, or whether or not I want none, and effectively the depth dial is gonna do all of the switching on of that effect. So that's the first thing for me to do. The next thing is to choose a rate. Now at the moment you can see that by default that's set to a 16th note, which is the rate that I want, but if I wanted to, I could vary that to change the uh, speed of playback of each of these steps. And there's one more thing I need to do. I don't wanna swing them out by the way, but if I did, it would be available here to introduce. But the one thing I do absolutely need to do is to think a little bit about the actual envelope shape of all of these steps. In other words, what I've got a chance to do here is to decide how they're going to attack, hold, and release. So if you think about it, every one of these sort of chunks really is going to open up the distortion amount. How quickly do I want that to happen? Well, that's set by the attack time. So if I want to, we're gonna actually have this fade in a little bit. Now I don't want that. I want something that's gonna be really sharp and punchy. 
then I've got a chance to set a hold amount. In other words, how long is the maximum value going to stay there? Is it going to fade away straight away, in which case I want no hold or very little? Or do I actually want to sustain that for a little period of time before we then get into what's called the release phase, which is going to control how quickly the sound sort of reverts back to normal. Now, trial and error, that's the only way that I'm going to really find out what the best values are going to be. But with any luck, now what's going to happen when I play a note is that we're going to hear the sound coming from the arpeggiator, but we're going to hear this distortion treatment, which is going to be coming from this step effects treatment. Let's compare that with the original. Okay, that's got a lot more power in it now. Now, the interesting thing about this is that I don't have to just use one sequence. If I want to, what I can then do is to choose a different parameter where I also have an opportunity to create some modulation. So I'm going to turn the filter back on, and this time what I'm going to do is to choose the filter cutoff as my uh, parameter. Let's just come in here for a moment. I need to switch on this modulator, and then what I'm going to do is to come and find filter cutoff, Definitely don't want any resonance in this, by the way. I'm going to turn that right down. Here I've got an opportunity again to kind of create a similar kind of shape from a sequence perspective. And in fact, what I'm going to do this time is just to use the first eight steps because that is effectively just going to sort of loop back around. So if I want to, I can create a shorter sequence to save me having to program the same pattern twice. Again, I've got the same controls in terms of depth, so I can decide how much I want this to be filtering. I have a suspicion that if I just leave this static amount right down here at the bottom, we're not going to hear a whole lot of this. We'll see in a moment. Rate, again, is going to stay the same. But again, you can see that the way that the envelope is shaped, I don't really think this is going to be very effective at the moment because we've got a long attack time, no hold, and a release that's taking a little while to fade away too. I don't think this is going to sound too great. Okay, so a couple of things to fix. Firstly, I think we need our default filter uh, line to be higher. The next thing I'm going to do is to make the attack time really sharp, and then we'll not worry about hold too much for now. And here's our release amount. That's really interesting. I really like how that begins to unfold. It's slightly messing around with the rhythm, but that's quite interesting too. And I could keep going. So if I wanted this to sort of also pan, for instance, or if I wanted to choose a different um, sort of parameter here for me to modulate to make part of the sequence, I can. So let's just see what this sounds like in context. If I turn this off altogether, what I've got here is some sort of trailer percussion that's sort of happening in this track as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play in the sequence that I've got in mind, and we'll see how it sounds with the drums. This is without any of of the step effect, and then we'll see what we're getting when we introduce that effect again. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quantize that so they're all absolutely bang in time. Do 
So you can hear how much more power there is in a sequence part like this as a result of this extra distortion. Now there's one more thing to say. Now obviously it's massively boosting volume as well. I've got an overall output level control here. So if things are getting out of hand from a level perspective, just trim the volume here. But the other thing that's really useful is this mix dial. So I've created quite an extreme effect. So if I wanted the amount of this, but I just wanted the whole of the balance of it to be less, I can simply just back it down here. So effectively what I can do is to introduce the amount that I want. So here is a sort of 50% sort of style mix instead. And that's working nicely. I still get that grit, but it's just not overwhelming the mix in the same way. So within this video, we've looked at a couple of things. Firstly, we've seen how the arpeggiator can actually produce running sequences for us rather than that kind of broken chord thing that we associate so readily with arpeggiators. But we've also seen that what we can do is to match the steps of a sequence like that using the step effects uh, plugin, choosing different parameters to modulate in some way so that they become part of those sequences.